Hey everyone, today we're going to be seeing if you can melt wood. So every single substance in the world actually does have a melting point. The only problem is most substances melting point is far above the temperature at which something spontaneously combusts. And that happens to be the case with wood. So wood has cellulose and lignin in it and a lot of other materials. And all of those materials are really big molecules. And really big molecules usually have higher melting points. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this wood in my vacuum chamber and then I'm going to shine my super bright laser on it to get it over its auto ignition temperature and see if it actually melts. Okay, attempting to melt wood in a vacuum. Three, two, one. Okay, we're at 0.6 atmospheres and half an atmosphere in there now. Almost our full vacuum with this pump. Okay, let's see if we can melt it. Three, two, one. Well, that's cool. You can see the smoke just falling off of it. It's not floating. So it looks like it's just becoming charcoal-like. You can see the smoke just falling off of it. Okay, so it mostly charred, but look around the edges here. There's an oily substance around it. So this brown oily stuff around it is something called pyroligneous acid. And then the very dark stuff that you see is tar. In fact, you don't need a vacuum chamber to collect this tar or all of those other products. So it's gonna be burning, but the initial oxygen will get used up so that there's no more oxygen left. So from then on, there's not gonna be any burning, but what's actually gonna be happening is it's gonna be pyrolyzing. And that means that the big, huge cellulose and lignin molecules are gonna start breaking down into smaller molecules. And we're going to be capturing those chemicals in this jar here. So I'll have this jar in water. It's going to be condensing all the smoke that comes off of this. Okay, let's put our wood in. Okay, you can see it's starting to smoke in there. Okay, let's try a little bit more wood with a shorter tube. So you can see a lot of liquid forming at the top right there. So that right there is the broken down cellulose and lignin. So you can see the liquid components coming off of the wood here, but what you don't see is the gaseous components. So there's hydrogen, carbon monoxide, methane, even CO2 coming off of this. And these are the gases that are actually burning when you see wood burning. If you've ever looked at wood burning really close, you'll notice that the flame isn't actually on the wood, but it's above the wood. That's because what's actually happening is you're heating the wood up high enough so that it breaks down into these gaseous components, and those gases are what catch on fire on top of the wood. There is a type of combustion that actually does happen on the surface, and that's called smoldering. So smoldering is when the oxygen directly reacts with the surface of the material. So that's why if you've ever looked at a fire closely, you kind of see two things happening. You see some bright red coals burning, and then you see fire above it. So the fire above it is burning the gases coming from the material, and the smoldering is actually burning the surface of the material. So all of the liquid that collected in my tube and everything was liquid that condensed at a higher temperature. But in my glass here, here's the lower temperature flammable fluid. And this has, a very, this has a very strong smell to it. So this right here is as close as you're gonna get to liquid wood. This literally is the wood, but it's not melted wood per se. It's basically broken down wood that wasn't burned. So basically what this means is that no matter what you do, you cannot melt wood. The reason is because in oxygen, it just starts on fire. In non-oxygen environment, it breaks down on its own. And so when molecules get too big and too long, you have to provide so much heat to melt them that they just break down spontaneously into smaller molecules. 